Hi, uh, welcome to Astro Journey UK. In today's video, which has been a long time coming, apologies for being away from uh, YouTube for quite some time. Today, I'm going to be talking about the ZWO Seastar S50 Smart Telescope, which I've got right here. So if you want to hear a little bit more about this telescope, um, my thoughts about it and first impressions, then uh, keep watching. So uh, starting off with the uh, the disclaimer, although this might be a bit of a complicated one. So I approached ZWO and said I was interested in uh, reviewing one of their telescopes when uh, they announced um, their cameras and the Sea Star and everything uh, earlier on this year. And uh, they got back to me and said they're uh, more than happy to uh, send one out for review. However, uh, I had a few um, issues whilst I was uh, reviewing the telescope and we had to sort of swap out a couple of scopes and things like that. Um, and in the way of an apology, they've uh, offered me this Sea Star for free. Um, I'd like to just sort of put that out there first thing. So technically they've not paid me to do this, but at the same time, I have got this as a thank you for uh, for the, the troubles that I've had. So um, all of that aside, this is still my honest review. Uh, I'm not letting the fact that I've got that essentially for free to reflect what I say in this review. However, it's all down to you in terms of how you want to actually interpret this. So I'm gonna start off with the uh, first impressions of this telescope. So I've been playing about with it so on and off for about a month and uh, my first impressions are this telescope is exactly what they wanted to uh, get out of this. They wanted something that was easy to use that anybody could pick up um, and you could get just get going with uh, astrophotography imaging super quick and this telescope does all of those things. So for example um, when I was first testing this out I'd already downloaded the app but um, Yep, the, the moon was out, so I thought I'd try the lunar astrophotography feature. And it took me literally about two minutes from opening up the case, uh, getting it outside, screwing the tripod on, putting it down, turning it on, opening up the app, and I was imaging straight away. Uh, if you compare that to um, sort of full-on, more serious astrophotography rigs, then the setup time is significantly um, greater than that. Uh, particularly around sort of just dealing with polar alignment and uh, telescope levelling and things like that. So uh, definitely a really good plus point from my perspective there. The other point um, from first impressions perspective is the Seastar app. So it's different to the ASIR app if anybody out there is used to that particular app um, for managing um, sort of full astrophotography rigs, I'll call it. Uh, the Seastar app itself um, has lots of really nice features, super easy to use. You can just open it up, connect to your telescope with ease, um, even sort of where you have to sort of select the Wi-Fi and things like that. Does that and the integration between Wi-Fi and Bluetooth is done really, really well. So a lot of the time you don't really think about what it's doing and how it's working. Uh, you just open the up app, connect to the telescope and then go, right, what do I want to do? I want to look at the moon, or I want to look at this deep sky target. You can either go straight to lunar photography, or you can go into the sky atlas and then select from the sky atlas uh, which target you want to uh, move to, select the target, and then start imaging. It's just ridiculously easy. So I've kind of already mentioned about lunar photography. Uh, the fantastic thing with this scope as well is it has everything that you need to do in order to be able to image and view the night sky from a deep sky uh, target perspective. So a few um, large galaxies, large nebula, etc. You can also do lunar photography with it um, and the moon takes up a significant proportion of the um, sensor itself. So you get a full um, image of the moon. And then the same with the sun as well. So um, you can do some solar photography with the included filter, <laughs> which is here. Um, you just pop that on the front of the telescope and you can do some solar photography. I think that's a really, really nice touch because, um, yeah, just the, the entry point to do sort of um, solar photography, getting the right kit and all of those sorts of things. I think this is really nice that they include that. And it's all in the kit uh, that you purchase. So what is included in the box? So you've got the telescope itself, which you can see behind me, um, and also the carbon fiber tripod, and it's got adjustable legs. Um, you can tell that it's really, really well built, really solid construction. And the uh, carbon fiber tripod itself, if anybody has uh, things like the AM5 or the AM3 
mounts you can kind of see where they've basically got the baby version of those um, those tripod legs um, so really really impressive there uh, you've got the solar filter and also got a couple of instruction booklets so there's like a um, a couple of quick guide booklets in there as well to be fair i don't think i even really use these um, to work out how to use it but um, everyone's different and also there's a usb-c cable which allows you to charge the telescope or um, connect it to the computer to be able to download the images and the videos from your imaging sessions for further processing if you want to. Just a quick side note before I forget, you don't have to post-process your images um, themselves. The app will actually do that for you. So when you take an image, um, say of a nebula, you sort of tell it to do an enhancement. And what it's doing is taking lots of photos, stacking them for you, processing them. So the image that you get, that you see on the screen, um, is, is a really good image of that particular target. I say really good, this is um, relative to sort of other telescopes. So this is a, I would say a beginner telescope, it's a smart telescope, it's doing a lot for you. Um, it's not gonna get the same quality of images that you will get from a dedicated astrophotography rig with a camera that will cost at least four times the price of this. So uh, just factor that in when I'm talking about this and saying it's a really good image or um, good quality, yes, it is, it is relative, but um, just quickly, this telescope uh, retails for 500 US dollars or 500 uh, UK pounds. <laughs> Sadly, the exchange rate kind of is rubbish for us at the moment. So, um, however, that said, I think it's a really good price point um, for this particular type of telescope. So just coming, covering some of the uh, specifications of the telescope itself. So uh, the scope itself weighs uh, three kilograms. Uh, it comes in a carry case, which is probably a couple of 100 grams or something you barely notice it it's really really lightweight but actually uh, really good at protecting the telescope itself um, the telescope itself is a um, 250 millimeter triplet apochromatic um, telescope what that essentially means is it's got three lenses within the telescope itself and the purpose of that is to help remove uh, chromatic aberrations where the different wavelengths of light, like the red, green and blue, they don't sort of focus exactly how they would do with, say, a doublet telescope lens. So that's to uh, basically is giving you better optics. The aperture of the telescope itself is 50 millimetres. So this works out as a um, an F5 telescope, which is actually reasonably fast. The sensor that it comes with is a, a Sony IMX 462 sensor. So it has, um, it's kind of like a, a 16 by nine aspect ratio sensor. And you'll see this in the images as well. And that has a resolution of 1920 by 1080. I think my, my one criticism about the sensor, although it's potentially a bit unfair, is the resolution I think would be nicer if it was better. However, when you think about um, the target market for this telescope, sort of people getting into imaging in the first place, sharing their photos on social media. I think this resolution is okay, um, but you're not gonna be able to take these images, um, print them out and expect a nice high quality image out of it. I think it does what it needs to do. So I think that's the bit that you need to take away there. Uh, the sensor is also capable of recording the images as fit images or TIFFs. And also you can record videos when you're doing things like lunar and solar photography using either MP4 or AVI. Benefit of recording it in AVI means that you can then stack it later on and you can start to remove the atmospheric wobble that you will see. Uh, there's also in terms of Wi-Fi connectivity, so you've got Wi-Fi 5G and 2.4G, and also you've got Bluetooth in the telescope in order to help you to connect to it. The mount itself is interestingly sort of an alt azimuth mount, so it's not your um, sort of German equatorial mounts that most astrophotography rigs typically use. The downsides of this from an imaging perspective is the longer you image with this particular mount type, the target will rotate through that image throughout throughout the evening as it's tracking through the night sky. So what you'll happen if you if you take if you enhance an image for potentially too long, you'll start to see artifacts or the edges of the image where um, you don't have the full set of data to stack it, so it begins to get a little bit noisy. Um, the telescope and the software is doing some very clever things to make sure that the image is exactly like the center of the image is still um, in the right orientation. So if you think of the image rotating around the, the, the portrait aspect ratio of the image, it's managing to 
um, process it such that it's stacking the same thing over um, as it goes. Now there's battery built into it. That lasts for about six hours, um, which is perfect for um, a night sort of casual uh, sort of imaging and sort of viewing the night sky. Um, also, it's really nice. There's actually a built-in light pollution filter, and that light pollution filter is a dual narrow band filter. And I'll pop up the uh, the wavelengths on the uh, on the screen for anybody who wants to know them. Um, but yeah, it gives you gives you a nice dual narrow band image, which works really well on um, a lot of the nebula. If you're imaging uh, galaxies, you want to do that broadband, so you kind of want to not have that light pollution filter on. So if you're in a light polluted area, you might have a bit of trouble there. I've taken some images of uh, the Andromeda galaxy from my Bortle 6, almost 7 class sky, and you'll be able to see the quality of the images that have come out from those. Um, also within there is, a, is an electronic focuser. So again, everything is, is there that you need. You don't need to do anything manually. So you, you basically sort of slew to the, the target that you want to uh, image, hit the auto focus button, and then that will actually automatically focus on the target, making the stars as small as possible to make sure that everything is as pin sharp as possible. Um, some features that have been released since I very first started using this scope uh, back in sort of, gosh, September time now, I think. Uh, sorry I've taken so long. They've now introduced uh, the ability to manually focus as well. So if you happen to have a Bassanoff mask or you want to try and do manual uh, focusing, then you can actually do that as well, which is quite nice. So when I first heard about this telescope and wanted to review it, I started to think about who is this uh, telescope actually for. Some uh, obvious things I would say is uh, somebody new to astrophotography or wants to see and learn a bit more about the night sky, it would be really good for them. I think I've seen and probably uh, you might have heard about sort of people that buy um, telescopes for visual astronomy and they say, oh yeah, we got it and then we were really disappointed we didn't see the things that we thought we'd be able to see with it. I'd say this telescope actually enables you to do that to a certain extent or to a greater extent. So if you want to be able to see Fright Nebula, some, some galaxies, the moon, you'll be able to see all of those things with this telescope. If you're trying to do visual astronomy with um, a really poor, slow telescope, you're not going to see any nebula at all. Uh, you'll be able to see the moon to an extent. So I think that's really good from that perspective. Another area I would say is um, is outreach. So um, one thing I'm quite looking forward to actually using this telescope for is um, at my local camera club, taking it along to them to be able to show them sort of how easy this device is to use and to be able to share things like um, solar photography and lunar and, and deep sky objects as well. The fact that this is so quick to set up, you just literally plonk it on the ground, make sure it's level um, using the, the level adjustment in the app itself, super quick, and then off you go. So really good from that, that point as well. Uh, another aspect might be if you're um, traveling somewhere and you don't literally want to lug all of your uh, astrophotography kit with you, I think it would be more for sort of casual observation. So if you're going away with the family or something like that, you happen to be going somewhere dark or you know that it's going to be clear and the sky is going to be really nice. I think that would be perfect for that particular situation. And then I think at the end of the day, the fourth reason that I came up with is actually it's just a good bit of fun. I must admit, I've had a bit of a lull from an astrophotography perspective over the past few months. And the one thing I really loved from this device was actually going, looking outside and going, oh, it, it's sort of clear or it's partially clear. There's a few clouds about, but actually mostly it's clear. Um, it's great just to be able to sort of play with in the night sky um, and just sort of view some targets and things like that without all of the hassle of setting everything up. Super quick, as I said before, uh, to get this thing set up and get it imaging and ready to go and then just sort of share them, some images with friends and family. So I think it's great from that point. So uh, this concludes my review of the ZWO C-Star S50 Smart Telescope. Uh, I'm planning on doing uh, further videos uh, using this smart telescope, uh, things like sort of lunar uh, photography and deep sky astrophotography as well as solar, um, to show in more detail um, how to use the scope and just how super easy it is to use. So if you want to see more, then uh, please subscribe to my channel. Um, so I'll leave it at that. Uh, thank you very much for watching and clear skies.